Hello, everyone, and welcome again to Buy Why Ukraine. We're here with Zarina Zabriskie, who is currently reporting from Zaporizhia. Hello, Zarina. How are you doing today? Hi, Claudia. I'm doing fine. No air raid alarm right now, so we're doing great. And looking forward to speaking to you about what seems to be the hottest issue on the world agenda. Is the talks about what's going on at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Right, and we hope Pun not intended, because when I wrote to my friends, I'm having a blast, uh, I thought twice. Uh, We hope not too hot, because the main issue at the station is to cool down the nuclear waste. And we spoke about that last time when we plugged in with Michael. So we know a little bit about it, but just if you missed it, I'll repeat it. Uh, The nuclear reactor was built with a nuclear war or war in mind. So it is pretty safe uh, as far as these things can be safe, but there's the whole other issue of the nuclear waste being stored underneath the sarcophagus, just like a Chernobyl station. And that's where the danger is. So if the station is stopped and the Russians are currently, and that's the recent development just today, threatening to switch off the power, they will stop cooling the water in the pool that is keeping the nuclear waste at the maintenance temperature, at the temperature at which this waste is still safe. Once it heats up, uh, there will be radiation in the air. It will be an invisible cloud. It will travel wherever the wind is blowing, and it certainly won't be hot. Okay, so uh, yesterday uh, the press there was a press conference held by the Minister of Energy and Interior of Ukraine uh, regarding the power plant. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about what was said uh, during this press conference? Uh, yes, Claudia, it was uh, just the right timing for me to arrive to report on this story uh, because along with me arrived the whole echelons of power. Not only the Minister of Energy, Herman Halushenko, was there, and the Minister of Interior, Denis Monastirsky, was there, uh, but the first deputy of the Foreign Affairs, uh, Yevhen Yenin, was there as well. BBC, um, how concerned are you? that there will be a nuclear disaster compared to last week or the month before, considering that Ukraine can't push Russia out of Enyahodar and other occupied territories. Uh, uh, of course, of course, we are concerned, that, that's for sure. And, and, and that is the situation. We see that the situation from the, uh, when they start sharing from the 5th of, of August, it, it's changed dramatically. And of course, we are concerned. That's why we are here. That's why we created uh, this group, that's why we are involved in everyday communication with this. And we speak to our international partners also. That, of course, we are concerned. That's why we are here today. And we, we will be here maybe once again and once again. And we, 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 we are ready for some speed, speed reaction. It's going to get worse. Respect of stance is impossible to protect because there are Russian occupation forces. It's a crucial concern that we have to understand with you. Uh, Byline Times, uh, can you comment possibly on how impartial is the International Atomic Energy Agency and how helpful would be the visit from them on the Ukrainian government conditions? So of course we are waiting for uh, impartiality and, and let's say that is the task of any international organization to be impartial, not to take of, of, of parts uh, or, of, of the war. But uh, uh, of course, we we want to see impartiality. We want to see uh, the that the EIA should say something about the war. They should say something about nuclear safety, because uh, you cannot just close the eyes and say that that if you see the military is there, if you see the weapon, and of course, it's influenced, it's directly influenced the the safety of nuclear material at the station. They were there to check out the training and the drill uh, taken by the uh, Department of Emergency and Rescue uh, that I was lucky to visit a couple of days ago and we will be lucky enough to see some footage from there. So the best experts in demining, uh, radiologists, uh, the chemical defense, 
uh, medicals, whatnot, were there, uh, kind of stage in this scenario, the unwanted, in fact, scenario, when people are exposed to radiation and being rushed to the rescue facility. And you will see how they are being uh, first uh, uh, put in front of the devices where the radiation level is being measured. And from there, they are taken to a special tent where they've been washed with a solution, uh, with the chemicals that will keep uh, their skin safe. Uh, their clothes they're wearing are being cut off, literally off them. It's very dramatic with the scissors. It'd be disposed of in the specially sealed bins. Those who can work, walk uh, take showers in a specially dedicated place. And they're given these suits, which look very much like astronaut suits. They're white and looking very sci-fi. Um, and uh, from there, the cars that could have been contaminated are being washed with special solutions. And it's a whole big procedure. Uh, it was really impressive because uh, uh, workers who were working on that had to wear the special protective suits uh, polyester mainly in close to 40 degrees centigrade were also the grain uh, corridor from uh, Odessa port where I'm usually based uh, and that has been going on successfully knock on wood even though uh, the Russians have been bombarding Odessa and the area around the port quite a bit, including yesterday, uh, there was a lot of damages. Uh, and another issue, which is very important, and we have mentioned in our shows before, uh, is the uh, humanitarian issue. And that is the prisoners of wars that are being held by the Russians in the prison of Alenivka and other prisons. You're, you're talking of political prisoners and my next question was going to be actually about um, the repercussions that this has had on the people of Zaporizhia. But um, you've previously mentioned to us or mentioned to me at least that um, uh, there has been a kidnapping. Uh, so could you tell us a little bit more about what this is about? Well, right, Claudia, great question. And it's easy to get confused because when we are talking about the humanitarian issues, there are also a lot of kidnapping going on in the occupied territories. And that includes Kherson, Melitopol, and uh, Zaporizhia. And Melitopol is a Zaporizhia area as well. Um, and I had uh, interviewed just two days ago the head of Zaporizhia, uh, region, oblast, it's called in Ukraine, uh, and his own son, a 16-year-old boy, was in fact kidnapped while trying to escape the occupied territories in the beginning of March. The boy was just simply taken out of the car when he was traveling um, at the so-called filtration point. Uh, he was in the car with women and small children and elderly, uh, and they didn't like the fact that he was looking and playing on his phone. And as soon as they looked at his documents, they realized that he was in fact a son of the head of the region, and they simply took him to a prison where he spent in two different prisons the next 90 days uh, in a cell being a witness to tortures. I won't go into details, it was very graphic. Uh, the boy was very strong. Luckily, he's now in safety. He is out of Ukraine, reunited with his mother. Uh, but the story itself uh, was so shocking, Claudia, and so heartbreaking. And the stoicism and dignity of the father uh, who had to still work and defend his area, his oblast, his territory, where he is an elected official and he's also uh, appointed by President Zelensky. So he's doing his duty while trying quietly and calmly uh, to do everything to get his son out of Russian jail. Can you tell us a little bit more um, about, so you mentioned the training that was taking place earlier. Can you tell us uh, where that took place? Right, that was uh, not your regular stadium or arena. Uh, the training took place in a parking lot of a gigantic shopping mall, which recently has been used for uh, processing, receiving, I should say, uh, refugees, you may say, or to be more exact, 
uh, the internally displaced people who are fleeing their occupied territories. Uh, I spoke to a gentleman uh, who drove his family out to safety in a mini car, which was completely covered in gray, black mud. He was happy. And when I asked him where's off now, he said that he is now staying in Bucha. And of course, I have reported for, from Bucha for Biowire and news and you've all heard about it. That's the place of a horrible massacre, but people are now happy to get there because it is currently not occupied. Many people still don't want to leave the areas that are in the hot zone or right next to the front because Ukrainians traditionally are very dedicated to their homes. They're passionate about their uh, houses, their fields, their land. And I've heard so many saying, where am I going to go? This is my home. The graves of my ancestors are here. My parents are here. I grew up here. I got married here. I don't want to go anywhere. Yeah, no, I, I can totally relate to that. Growing up like in um, Eastern Europe myself, I know what it's like. The, you try to tell someone they're moving from their family home. They're just like, no, I don't want to go anywhere ever, other than here because you have generations who have lived in the same home and it's just been passed down the line, passed down the line. So I can only imagine what it would mean to be told to just up and leave. I think I'd stand to the last minute. Exactly, Claudia, you know that. You know, it's a very harsh, harsh uh in divorce and not everybody is ready for that moving on from the hot topic let's talk about some other news happening in ukraine today and over the last couple of days zarina could you please talk to us a little bit about the bombing that has happened in Kharkiv that has led to loads of people uh, losing their lives and dozens of other injured right claudia um this is indeed tragic last night and this night bombing were exceptional. Uh, we're still looking at the numbers. Loboda and both objects that were bombed uh, were dorms of boarding institutions. And one of them reportedly, I don't have all the details yet, are for handicapped people and for uh, people with a hearing um, problems. So they couldn't hear uh, the air raid and they possibly, probably didn't hear the explosions. It's really tragic. Uh, there are teenagers among the dead, and this is the reality of Ukraine. And I can tell you that only the biggest news like this really reached the West. But yesterday, when by the end of my work day, I step out to get uh, a bottle of beer because the day is hard, it's hot, and you know, sometimes you just need a drink. I went to a kiosk next door to my Airbnb and I uh, talked to the young lady who sold me the beer and she's displaced herself. She's a displaced person. Her family is from a little town of Arehova in the Parisia region, about an hour from the city where I'm staying now, the Parisia. And in her town, the previous night, there were several shellings and that girl riding a bicycle was torn into pieces. And that you most likely have not heard about because it's impossible to report on every single civilian, on every single girl, a boy, or an elderly, or civilian person who has been killed by the Russian bombs. It's, it's just so heartbreaking to hear that. Like, it is, it's, and it's always people who have are just minding their business going along with their everyday activities like the girl riding her bike and then next thing you know and the the people not hearing the bombs wow wow i i, I don't I'm, I'm speechless i don't i don't i have no idea what to say to that um to, talking of the western media actually not reporting that kind of stuff i've been with, obviously watching like the headlines on um, the bbc non-stop and um they literally have dedicated maybe like a one minute slot to like an update on Ukraine. And they keep pretty much talking about um, the sh the bombing in uh, Kharkiv. Um, but when it comes, but then they gave like a two minute slot to talk about the fact that we're having wonky vegetables this um, summer. So it's, do you know what? There, there might not be time, but there's definitely time to talk about more than they are covering. Um, so, but that's the mainstream. Yes, I, I, I agree with you, Claudia, and I appreciate this conversation because on the one hand, of course, we all want to live our life. We want to enjoy 
the summer. We want to have fun with our friends and families and summer vacation. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's actually great because one of the things that Putin and the Kremlin want is the demoralization of the whole Western society, the panic. One of the reasons he's playing the tricks with the nuclear power station is to get everybody scared and to draw uh, thinking about the vegetable of the day or drinking beer. And that's one of the remarkable resistance that I've seen here in Ukraine when the civilians and peaceful people won't stop having fun. They're also, you know, playing games, they're playgrounds, people are riding bikes and, um, you know, they, there's a river here at Dnipro and the beautiful beach if people are swimming in the river uh, even when the air raids are going on there's nothing wrong with that but on the other hand there should be awareness there should be the knowledge and uh, clear recognition that there is the biggest wars in the world war ii happening in the middle of U the european continent and it's not even the matter of the danger or not danger to the European continent is the matter of humanity on top of everything. Yeah, it's, I couldn't have said it any better myself. Um, okay, let's move on to enough, another piece of news from today. So there have been reports, obviously, that Russia has falsely claimed um, that recent attacks in Crimea are terrorist attacks. Uh, do you want to speak to us a little bit about that? Right, and we spoke about that before. Of course, one of the main issues that is being discussed now and people are aware of it, that um, several states have declared already or want to declare Russia either the sponsor of terrorism, the state sponsor of terrorism, or a state terrorist, as Zelensky demands. And uh, uh, if you uh, randomly put a Russia terrorist state on Twitter, you will see that it is in fact trending for several days already. And there is a reason for it. One of them is the Kharkov bombing and the Zaporizhia nuclear power station blackmailing, as we have discussed. Uh, but Russia in a very a typical characteristic manner uh, turns it around. They love to do gaslighting, and this is a propaganda trick. And they say, hey, that's not us. We are not the terrorists. You are the terrorists. And by you, it could be anyone. Uh, obviously, they claim that Ukraine is a terrorist state. Uh, they also claim that behind the bombing in Crimea, one can see uh, the hand of London or the hand of Great Britain. Uh, so there is a lot of jokes and memes going around like about James Bond and you can imagine, I'm not gonna go there, I'll let you go. Um, and it could be the United States, it could be NATO, United Nations, uh, you name it. I don't know, aliens from the moon or other galaxies are the terrorists, but not Russia. So blaming Ukrainians, the brace to this point for uh, the attacks in the Crimea and claiming these attacks to be terrorists is the propaganda trick. Now, who is really behind these attacks? We still don't have official confirmation uh, of any reliable uh, source or nature. The Ukrainian government did not take any responsibility for the strike, but there's a constant uh, talk about uh, such strikes being fair. And uh, I have read today that uh, the United States or some officials, high officials in the United States have confirmed uh, that it would be fair for Ukraine to hit the uh, objects, infrastructure objects on the occupied territory because it's Ukrainian territory and Ukraine has the right to defend its own country. Okay, so that is all that uh, me and Zarina have for you guys today. Zarina, I've got one final question for you. Where are you off to now? Right, Claudia. Well, I was going to head to Kiev tomorrow, but apparently it's a popular destination. And I don't know whether people are really fleeing the area because tomorrow something big is being promised by the Russians at the nuclear power plant. So we shall see. I will be still around. But after that, I'm heading to Kyiv, where I have a couple of interesting stories to cover. And from there, I'm heading, lo and behold, 
to another nuclear spot, uh, and that is Chernobyl. And that's a whole different story. And I have stories to tell from there. Well, I cannot wait to hear what you report from Kiev, Kiev, and definitely cannot wait to hear what you've got going on in Chernobyl. Uh, but it seems like you're gravitating towards all of the nuclear plants. Please stay safe uh, for our sake. We might have to get you a hazmat suit at this rate. Um, but, it's too yeah. hard, Claudia. It's too hard. <laughs> okay, Zarina, can you quickly tell us about what's behind you? It looks very colourful and green. Well, in fact, we were talking about the vegetables, important part of life here. People love to eat. So what you see behind me right now are the uh, harbus, uh, and um, they are watermelons. And I haven't tried one yet. I've been too busy reporting from funny places. But you could see there's a lot of them here. And there's the whole fruit stand where people are taking their fruits there. I don't know if you could see it well. Yeah. And this is a very beautiful tomato that, in fact, I'm going to buy <laughs> if it's still available. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, can it, like, here. It's so big. Yeah, got it. And it's also really delicious. It's really amazing. So I have to go now, Claudia. I'm going to buy the tomato and eat it. <laughs> Enjoy. Make sure to buy a beer to accompany with the beautiful tomato. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's been so great to talk to you. Such a pleasure, and I'm looking forward to the next time. You too. Take care. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Bye, Zarina. Bye, Claudia. <laughs>